is the Panzer useless? The Panzer is considered to be the best mobile close-range anti-air defense system of its class. It is a further upgrade of the famous Tunguska short-range air defense system, which was the best system of its kind since its introduction in the 1980s. It was originally designed to shoot down low-flying attack helicopters such as the American AH-64 Apache, which posed a serious threat to Soviet armored tank brigades. Back in the Cold War, only the German Jeopard and Roland Martyr had similar capabilities. The Panzer's primary mission is to protect the S-400 launcher vehicles against bombs and missile attacks at close range. This combination of long-range and short-range air defense is the only effective way to defend against all kinds of threats on the modern battlefield. While the long-range S-400 takes care of high-flying aircraft at long range, the Panzer takes care of any low-flying threats that get too close. But in recent conflicts it seems the modern Russian missile system Panzer has shown to be not very effective in combat against drones. Several Panzer systems have been destroyed by drone attacks in Syria and Libya. None of these vehicles were operated by the Russian army however. All of the Panzer systems that were destroyed were operated by Syrian or Libyan forces, which are less effective in training and equipment. Most of those Panzer trucks were attacked and destroyed during transportation, when they were not in active operating mode. In a war, information is the most important key. Turkish intelligence located the transport convoys carrying the Panzer vehicles that were freshly delivered to Libya, still being loaded on the trucks when they were being attacked and destroyed in a blitzkrieg-like preemptive strike before the systems could even be unloaded and activated. Turkish drones blitzkrieged the Libyan army transport convoys before the systems could be delivered to the destination point. As this video clearly shows, the radar was not in active mode when the strike took place. Usually, the Panzer truck can engage targets even on the move, so there is no need to turn the radar off while relocating or driving. In another case a Panzer was attacked and destroyed after it was already parked in a shelter. Since the system does not work without a crew, this is when it is most vulnerable. The crew needs some rest too and the enemy just waited for this moment to exploit the situation to attack the vehicle when it was abandoned and defenseless. It's things like this that happen in a real war too. Many people forget that soldiers are just humans after all. But at least in some cases, the Panzer was in fully active mode when it was being attacked. In this video we can see a Syrian Panzer attacked by Israeli suicide drones. In this case the Panzer has its radar activated and detected the Israeli suicide drones and even tried to shoot them down as they are attacking. We can see the Panzer firing two or more missiles at the incoming suicide drones in an attempt to intercept them. However without much effect, as the suicide drone seemed to be unaffected and hit the targeted Panzer. We can also see another suicide drone in this footage, flying by just seconds before the impact, which indicates that multiple drones were used in this attack to overwhelm the Panzer's missile defense. Another Panzer was destroyed after it had already depleted all its missiles and run out of ammo and was in the process of being resupplied. In this situation the vehicle is extremely vulnerable as it cannot defend itself. Usually, other Panzer vehicles in the group would provide close support in this situation while in the process of resupplying. But unfortunately, the Syrian and Libyan army didn't even have many vehicles in the first place only very limited numbers of Panzer systems. So they couldn't operate them in large groups but only as single units alone, without any support from other vehicles. In this situation, the Panzer can be easily overwhelmed and destroyed. 
In the Russian army, the Panzer vehicles are much closer together so they can support each other. But in other cases, when the Panzer was operated by the Russian army, it worked apparently very effective, shooting down multiple attacking drones. So there seems to be a big difference in the use of Russian and other operators. Probably because the Russian army uses highly effective electronic warfare and electronic countermeasure jamming, which the Syrian or Libyan armies don't have. Also because Russia is using multiple Panzer trucks in a formation together to effectively support each other, while the Libyan and Syrian army only use the Panzer as a single unit alone without any support, which makes it an easy target. The biggest threat to modern anti-air defense systems are low-cost, disposable suicide drones, such as the Mini Harpy, which can be launched from trucks. They are cheap and mass-producible so they can be used in swarms to overwhelm and destroy any anti-air defense. That way, Azerbaijan effectively destroyed the Armenian S-300 in combat in the Azerbaijan-Armenian War in 2020, the first time such air defense system was destroyed in real combat. Yet another big threat on the modern battlefield are very small, low-cost, anti-personnel drones. Although they don't carry enough explosives to be a threat to armored vehicles, but they are very dangerous for troops and infantry. Since they are very cheap and mass-producible, there will be literally hundreds of them in swarms overwhelming the battlefield, searching for targets. Even the Panzer would be overwhelmed and quickly run out of ammo. The use of armed combat drones has drastically increased since the recent years. In the past it was only the USA that used massive drone attacks in Afghanistan and Pakistan against the Taliban. But since then many other countries have developed and mass-produced armed combat drones as well. Most prominently Turkey, China and Iran have become very big players in the drone war. Now consider that electronic jamming is also used on the modern battlefield, which is a serious problem for any radar system as it can significantly decrease the radar energy. Such as the Turkish Coral Electronic Jammer, which uses very powerful jamming emissions that can effectively blind the Panzer's radar. A big problem for the Panzer is that it does not have an active phased radar, but instead it still uses a passive phased radar which is overall less effective and more vulnerable to jamming. PESA uses a single transmitter receiver module. While ESA uses multiple transmitter receiver modules, several hundreds in fact. Simply put, it means that if the single transmitter module of a PESA radar gets jammed, it is completely blind and cannot receive or process signals anymore. Meanwhile the ESA radar having hundreds of individual and independent transmitter modules, can still work without problems even if a few modules get jammed. This leaves their PESA radar much more vulnerable to electronic jamming, and that's a big problem for the Panzer. If at least the Panzer would have an ESA radar, it would have a better chance to work effectively under heavy electronic jamming conditions. But unfortunately, it doesn't. But drones themselves are also very vulnerable to electronic jamming too. Since they are remotely controlled, that means the communication to the operator can be disturbed or even hacked and then taken control of. That way, Iran hacked into one of the most expensive American drone of all times and took control over it. And yet Iran is not even considered to have the best electronic warfare equipment. Russia for example has surely much better electronic jamming equipment than Iran does. So if Iran with cheap electronic equipment could already disable one of the most expensive American drones, just imagine what Russian even more advanced electronic warfare equipment could do. But how to counter drones effectively if the radar gets jammed by electronic warfare? The best solution is by using a thermal or electro-optic device. 
A thermal tracking device does not work by radar waves, but it works by heat signatures, effectively detecting any objects day and night. It is also immune to electronic jamming, since it cannot be jammed by electronic countermeasures. Of course the Panther also has a thermal tracking device, but it can only see in one direction, since it does not rotate like a radar. So it cannot scan the entire sky, which makes it vulnerable from flanking attacks. But it is the only effective way for the Panther to detect drones if the radar gets jammed. A better example of thermal tracking device is the British Stormer anti-air vehicle. It uses a rotating thermal tracking site, which rotates around its own axis automatically similar to a radar. The thermal tracking device automatically keeps scanning the entire sky in all directions simultaneously, to search for any targets under any conditions. Since it does not need a radar, it cannot be jammed by enemy electronic measures. Another good example is the new Russian Sosna system. It is similar to the British Stormer vehicle in the way that it uses a thermal tracking device as its main source of detecting threats in the sky, so that it does not need to rely on a radar. This greatly improves the effectiveness in heavy electronic warfare environment, since it cannot be jammed by electronic warfare. But the most effective counter against drones is the laser weapon. It has unlimited range and unlimited ammo, since it doesn't need to be reloaded, it can't run out of ammunition. The laser weapon will be the most reliable defense against drones on the modern battlefield. Right now only a few countries are developing or already have a laser weapon, including the USA, Israel, Turkey, China, Germany, and Russia. Modern lasers nowadays are very small and practical, they can be fitted even on a small and light jeep. The United States already operates a big fleet of trucks equipped with the laser weapon. It's not only effective against drones, but also against artillery and mortar shells, effectively protecting friendly troops on the battlefield from enemy long-range artillery fire. Turkey was the first country to actually use a laser in real combat, shooting down a Chinese-made drone operated by the Libyan army. Germany is currently testing its laser weapon on the Boxer armored personnel carrier, and on one of the Saxon-class frigates. The German army will also use the laser for land-based air defense systems. Russia is also developing a laser weapon, However, it is a little bit more heavy than the Western counterparts, and cannot be fit on any practical small jeep, but needs to be towed by a heavy truck instead. And China copied most stuff like usual. So to draw a conclusion, is the Panzer useless? Well, it is definitely not completely useless, as it can be quite effective when used correctly. It depends on the circumstances and conditions. The Panzer is one of the best short-range air defense system, no doubt about it. But unfortunately, it does not have an ESA radar, but rather just a less advanced PESA radar, which makes it more vulnerable to powerful electronic warfare jamming. The radar is not bad, but it could be better because when powerful electronic jamming is used against the Panzer, it will be much less effective. Especially when it's only one single vehicle alone operating without any electronic warfare support, as it happened with the Libyan and Syrian army. In such a situation it will be very vulnerable. But when used in formation with other Panzer vehicles working together and supporting each other, and a competent crew who knows how to operate it, then it will be much more effective on the battlefield. But at least in the Russian army, the Panzer can use the S-400's powerful Nebo-M radar, which is in fact an active phased array, 
with a lot more power than the Panzer's own radar. So with the help of the S-400's powerful Nebo MESA radar, it can be very effective on the battlefield even under heavy electronic warfare conditions. This is the first Russian ground-based ESA radar, which gives the Russian air defense systems finally the capability to work even under heavy electronic jamming measures, which is a big improvement over the old S-300 which only had a PESA radar. Russia has learned a lot of valuable lessons from the recent conflicts in Syria and Libya. As a result, the Panzer was upgraded to the new SM variant with better radar suite and capabilities in 2020. The new Panzer SM implements some of the lessons Russia gained from recent combat engagements. The new configuration has improved capability of the system dealing with heavy electronic jamming. This variant is based on the new Kamas Tornado truck chassis, which is also used as personnel carrier for the Russian soldiers. Instead of a standard container for a single missile, the upgraded Panzer SM will have four smaller missiles in a sink launcher, boosting the total amount of ready missiles to 48 instead of the original 12, drastically increasing the ready ammunition it can carry and shoot. It has a new very powerful radar with much better improved anti-jamming capability, to work effectively even in heavy jamming conditions. Although it is still not clear if it's a new ESA or just an improved PESA radar, but either way it is definitely much better than the old basic radar of the older versions. This new variant will enter service beginning this year. So the Panzer will remain a very important and valuable weapon system on the modern battlefield in the future.